And Jack, can you tell us a little bit more about what we saw today and uh, how you guys rigged this bridge to go down so smooth? Well, actually, the last thing that we needed to do before we move into uh, phase two was get rid of the I-81 bridges. And, uh, you know, we had a couple of ways that we could do that. We could do that by uh, conventional means, which uh, would take about two months, or we could do it with a controlled demolition, which we chose to do. And by doing that, um, we cut down the time to about two, two weeks worth of actual work time, but an extensive amount of planning. And controlled demolition actually is much safer and much less impact on the environment. So, as you can see, it went very well. And uh, we're very pleased with the uh, with the results. But now the work begins as far as being able to uh, to get that steel out of the river and and processed away from the uh, the contract. How long do you anticipate it's going to take you to remove all of this rubble? Well, it takes. Uh, we're going to get it out of the river today, and then it will take some time to be able to get it off site. Um, talk to us. I think that's so interesting. That it's actually safer to explode this bridge than a traditional demolition. Right. Can you talk to us about why? Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you're up in the air and you're actually taking it down by conventional means, number one, you're in the air, and uh, you know, and you've got iron workers that are working and, and disassembling steel while you're high in the air. Here, um, basically, everything is down on the ground, and uh, and you're able to work, uh, you know, at, at, at ground level. So uh, that and the fact is, um, you know, environmentally, we didn't have to build access out to the uh, river to be able to get cranes and, and access to the steel. So uh, as far as habitat in the river and the actual river itself, the, uh, the impact, while people might not think it's less impact, it certainly is. Um, big day for the community. We have a lot of people out to see this. Why do you think this is so highly interesting? Yeah, I mean, it's very exciting. I mean, it, Anytime you're talking about 600 pounds of dynamite, and uh, you know it, it, it is very exciting. And actually, in theory, if uh, just to explain how this happens, I mean the uh, the dynamite was installed in the substructure of the bridge in about three foot uh, grid type of increments, and uh, it was it was installed on the side opposite of our new structures. So essentially, what happened is. The, uh, the dynamite blew up the concrete away from the rebars. Hello, B. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and when the uh, concrete was blown away from the reinforcing steel, there was no uh, further strength of the substructure. So the bridge leaned, the existing bridge leaned away from the new bridges and dropped straight down due to the weight of, uh, of the superstructure. Awesome. Yep. Um, and talk to us a little bit about what's next. I know you touched on it, but as far as cleanup, Getting the steel out of there will take some weeks to do, but um, you know that's what we'll be working diligently at that, as well as everything else that has to take place on Prospect Mountain. From from the very beginning, this job is is required, having to be strategic in where we work and minimizing impacts to the traveling public. And this was just another way, just a rolling roadblock today for just a few minutes is all it took to be able to demolish the I-81 structures where, uh, you know, if we had taken it down by conventional means, it could have been uh, impacts for a longer duration. How long have you been doing the work to take out the bridge? Yeah, you know, uh, actually it takes, you know, probably six months worth of planning with, between all of the uh, stakeholders that are involved and uh, in meetings with utility companies and regulatory companies and, and then the engineering that goes into setting it all up. So, you know, I mean, say that would be six months of actually strategizing and, and planning this and then uh, you know, over the last few weeks really pulling it all together. Well, the work zone is still the same Prospect Mountain work zone that it's always been, and we've been very fortunate that the public does heed our warnings, and uh, you know, especially the travelers that are driving through the work zones, they're, they expect the unexpected, they avoid the area when they, whenever they can, and uh, you know, the speed limit is 45 miles per hour out there. We thank the uh, New York State Police that, that help us day in and day out, the Binghamton Police and the Sheriff's uh, Office for always paying attention out there to try to keep not only our workers safe, but the travelers safe as well. So people get it. Uh, it's been going on for a long time, and I can't say enough how the community has supported us, the travelers, and uh, you know, we're very pleased with it. Is it back to business as usual Oh, absolutely. No closures, no nothing? I mean, basically the road will open back up. It was a rolling roadblock uh, performed by the state police. As soon as they got the all clear, uh, they let the cars go, and uh, and I can't see. I don't have eyes behind my in the back of my head, but I'm assuming you're seeing vehicles go across the bridges now, or um, so. Yep, yeah, so it's all clear. Okay, and my last question. Um, 
I designed it. What's this mean? We've seen so much movement in the area, and this is it coming down. What's this? You know, it's kind of a landmark for our area's infrastructure as far as, you know, getting rid of the old and bringing in the new. Well, you know what, uh, the way that those structures were set up, they, the only alternative there was was to replace them. There are uh, 90,000 vehicles out there to try to build. Uh, you can't rehabilitate based on the orientation of those beams. Sometimes we are able to rehabilitate existing structures, but in this case, the way that the uh, three girders were set up, uh, it didn't lend itself to being able to rehabilitate them, only to replace them. And, uh, in order to minimize the uh, impact of the public and uh, you know, our new bridges with stainless steel decks, we were designing them for a 100-year service life. So, um, you know, a, a lot of progress has been made since the 60s when these were built.